All right. Well, good morning. Welcome out to Sunday school this morning. I appreciate you being in the Lord's house this morning. I guess some of you got to hear Pastor Cody at 8.30, and some will be hearing him here at 11. So um, let's remember Brother Jerry. He's, um, he's still sick. Um, he's actually had pneumonia and has had to be in the hospital. Um, they, I think he could get out either today, maybe, or tomorrow. So I think that's pretty encouraging that uh, hopefully he's doing better. But y'all pray for uh, Brother Jerry, and uh, we're going to pray for him here in just a minute. But um, uh, Lord willing, if he's able to come back next week, um, he'll be back in here, and then uh, my class will be back down in our normal spot. But uh, if not, we'll be starting a new series next Sunday regardless. We knew he was going to have a couple weeks to try to get back to normal, but if something happens with Kane or we're still in the auditorium, we'll start a new series next uh, next Sunday and get that underway, and then when Brother Jerry can come back, um, he'll be able to come back, so but we'll be praying for him. Um, your pastor killed an awful big buck yesterday, so see, now you're just going to have to get over it. If Listen, the next two weeks, stuff is going to die. That's just the way it is, and uh, you need to go see. If you ain't seen Cody's big buck, you need to ask him. And, and listen, we can't make our preacher lie or nothing, so don't ask him where he killed it. Just uh, uh, just uh, uh, you need to go see his big old buck he killed. So I'm happy for him and tickled. And uh, he said that buck was going to be a Baptist deer. That means it's not going in his house. It's coming to church in his office. So uh, um, that deer's going to turn Baptist. So, um, but uh, let's... Uh, before we get started this morning, let's go to, um, to the Lord in prayer and uh, especially remember Brother Jerry this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for this opportunity we have to come to church, Lord, and worship you in spirit and truth, Lord. We just pray this morning there's a lot of folks sick in our church and uh, a lot of folks um, just having to endure this uh, pandemic in different ways and um, Lord, we just want to lift Brother Jerry, widen her up this morning in prayer as a faithful servant of God. Lord, there's many others sick, and we'd like to lift them up as well, but just want to pray especially for Brother Jerry this morning. She'll just strengthen him. Lord, he's a, such a good asset here at our church, such an encouragement to this Sunday school class, and we just pray that uh, uh, you'll just uh, help him feel better and, and heal him, Lord. And we just thank you so much for the opportunity we have to come together in Sunday school and uh, uh, learn from you, Lord, learn from your word, and pray that we'll apply it to our hearts and lives. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I was thinking of something just, I've, I've probably done this before, but just something a little um, different. Like I said, we're probably going to start a um, new series next week, so just kind of pulling a rabbit out of the hat here this morning. But, uh, you know, we're getting into Thanksgiving time and things, and and harvest season a lot of the gardens are already harvested but uh, uh, some of the crops are still standing in the field and things and and I, I always enjoy uh, lessons in the Bible that cover uh, like the laws of the harvest and and I've always I just am intrigued by uh, how many great truths are in um, things like that that's in the Bible and and it's things that we apply even today in our own gardens um, as simple as sim something as simple as your own garden how the laws of harvest uh, still apply today. And um, so it's very interesting. There's a lot of stories linked to the laws of the harvest in the Word of God. Um, in, in Ruth, we find a great story about when, when speaking of harvest and the laws of the harvest. But it's pretty neat because I like studying um, topics like this because it, it actually is very simple, but then it covers some pretty... Uh, things sometimes it's hard to understand and uh, that's kind of where we pick up this morning first and then we're going to back up and get into the laws of harvest but we're just going to use our Bible this morning you can uh, follow with me we're in Sunday school class so we're going to use the word of God this morning but uh, the first place we're going to look is in Matthew chapter 27 down in verse 52 I'll actually probably start up in 50, verse 51, but Matthew 27, verse 51, um, you know, we're going to start here, and like I said, we're going to turn to Leviticus here in a minute and a couple other uh, places, but, you know, talking about the laws of the harvest, and here's what I was getting at, when it comes to your garden, that's pretty simple, you have the first fruits, you know, boy, everybody's racing to get the uh, first uh, tomato by the 4th of July, you know, that's the first fruit. 
Um, but then there's going to come a time when you're t making tomato juice and uh, tomato sauce and, and whatever else you want to do with tomatoes because, boy, they're just coming. The, the harvest is there. And then later on in the year, a lot of uh, ladies, they'll make uh, like a goulash or a, they'll get stuff out of the garden, the gleanings, and they'll throw it all in a pot and, and can uh, some jars of that. And that's the gleanings. So it's something as simple as the garden but then here we run across a difficult, sometimes for some people, passage of Scripture. And, but it don't change what the Bible says. So here's, and, and this is encouraging even for believers. So let's look at what I'm talking about this morning. Um, in Matthew chapter number 27, down in verse 51, we're picking up here, you know the story. Um, and um, Christ is um, crucified and... Here in verse number 51, we pick up the story. It says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came. Now watch this. I, I, I really like this passage of Scripture. Some people get a little scared of it, but it's, it's so um, captivating once you, once you understand it. Um, so, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Now, watch this. And verse 53 expounds on that. And came out of the graves after his. His is talking about Jesus. After his resurrection. Remember, he's the first fruits. We're going to look at that in a minute. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So, you know... Again, this is one of those passages of scriptures that if you're reading through here, it's really something that's kind of hard to preach on. So a lot of times you just read through it. But it, every verse means something here. So you see that the graves were open. Many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose, but watch this, and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So these bodies laid in the graves open, if you will, as what I could only imagine for three days here waiting on Jesus to uh, raise from the dead. And then after Jesus' resurrection, here they come. Now, you say, well, what, what does this have to do with what we're talking about? Well, here's what we're going to look at next. So you can, um, you can hold your place or we're just lose your place and follow along here. Leviticus chapter number 23. I always told you I like the book of Leviticus. A lot of great truths in there, and one of them's talking about the laws of the harvest, Leviticus chapter 23. Down in verse number 20, it says, And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord. So you're going to see some things take place through here that explains the law of harvest. Um, and you're going to see these three different divisions of it. So here we've already saw one in verse 20 with the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord with the two lambs and they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the uh, selfsame day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a... A statute forever in all your dwelling throughout your generation. And when you reap the harvest of your land, so there's our harvest. So in verse 20, we saw the first fruits. In verse 22, we see the harvest. So when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make uh, clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shall thou gather any gleanings. Remember uh, little Ruth, she, the Moabitress, she wanted to go and glean in Boaz's field. Remember that? So uh, again, you can apply this and, and, and learn from that story and apply this there. So when thou reapest, um, neither shall thou gather any gleanings of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. So here in the laws of the harvest, we see in verse number 20, lays out number one, the first fruits. In uh, verse number 22, we see the harvest, the bulk of the harvest. And then on down in verse 22, we see the gleanings. So you've got three uh, different segments 
of a harvest. Um, you know, one thing that kind of goes along uh, with this, and I'm always careful not to just try to spiritualize things, so you just kind of, this is kind of something neat, just take it for what it's worth. Um, but three different times in the Word of God, we do see the phrase, uh, come up hither, come up hither. And, you know, if you link that to the laws of harvest, that is pretty interesting that it's mentioned three times, and there's the first fruits, the harvest, and the gleanings, which is three. So it is kind of interesting, but you, you want to be careful with those things and not just try to spiritualize Scripture. But there's three times that the words come up hither is mentioned. Uh, one time is in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 7. You don't have to turn um, there if you don't want to. I'll just uh, um, read it or whatever. But as you look here, and I actually think that I may have wrote down the wrong verse. But um, see, maybe we weren't supposed to talk about that this morning. But anyway, there's three times that it's mentioned. I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I had it wrote down. But um, in Proverbs is the first one. I'll have to find that later for you. But um, it's come up hither and mention about the first fruits. So as you look on, and here's where this begins to apply to us. So let's turn over to 1 Corinthians, if you will. 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 20. First Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit. So again, here's something interesting that you see, if, um, if you will for a second, you see the laws of the harvest mentioned here, and you've got to pay close attention. Verse 23, But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. So there's, remember, that's the laws of the harvest. There's our first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. So there's the harvest. Remember, what are we waiting for? Listen, we're uh, not waiting for signs. We don't need any more signs as the church, as we live in this dispensation of grace. We're no longer looking for signs. We're listening for sounds, right? Uh, we're not looking for signs. We're listening for sounds because we're waiting for the Lord to come back. We're waiting for the harvest. So here it actually tells you that. You see the laws of harvest. So, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. So there's the harvest. Then, watch this, cometh the end when he shall have delivered up. So then you get a glimpse into the gleanings. Now, it don't come out and say the gleanings, and it don't come out and uh, say the harvest, but you can see that it still follows the laws of the harvest. So verse 24, Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Notice verse 25, For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. So here you see the first fruits. You see a little glimpse of the harvest, and then you also see another little glimpse again of the gleanings. You see this. So we saw this here, if you will, in the limited resurrection, as, as what I've always heard it referred to as this limited resurrection in Matthew. In Matthew. And you'll remember um, when you study the tithe and when you study the sheaf and the omer, the tenth, of the first fruits. You, you see that a lot in the Word of God. The first fruits, the first fruits of the harvest or of what you make or whatever. Now, John chapter number 12 shows us something else, and you don't have to turn there. I can read it here. But it talks about, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, 
it bringeth forth much fruit, much fruit. So here as we see, these things are, have already happened. These, um, this limited resurrection, this first fruit. So we're not waiting now for the first fruits. It's already happened. It's, it's just like when you show your tomato off before July 4th and you've got that tomato. You can only get one ripe one. Um, before July 4th, you know, a year that you can show somebody and say, this is my first one. That's already happened. So when number two and three and the bulk of the harvest comes along, you can no longer say, well, look at my first tomato. That's already happened. And the same thing's already happened in the scriptures. And that's what we're looking at this morning as this picture of the first fruit when Christ was raised from the dead and then here, like we saw, those that had laid in the graves come up after his resurrection. So the first fruits is over with. So now we're waiting for the harvest. Now we're waiting for the harvest. And as we look here, I had this one wrote down right. So number two this morning as we look at the harvest and we see another come up hither it's found in Revelation chapter number 4, down in verse number 1. It says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first uh, voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So here's our second come up hither. The bulk at the, the rapture, the church. So... If you remember back in Matthew, chapter number 9, down in verse 38, um, I remember an evangelist said this one night, I can't remember now who it was, but it really stuck with me. It says, you know, this was really the only prayer request of Jesus. I mean, he prayed for us and, and prayed for um, his disciples, and, but this is a prayer request, if you will. And it's found in Matthew chapter 9, um, and, and we can back up to verse 36, 7, and 8 just to read it. But it says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because um, they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest, the harvest. So here we're looking at the harvest. Truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Now here's the prayer request. Pray ye, you pray, I pray, pray ye therefore. So therefore, because the harvest is truly plenteous. Remember, there's our word, therefore, we look before. So pray ye therefore, because the harvest is truly plenteous. The, the Lord, pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. So pray, the harvest is now. The harvest is now. And we see that, you know, um, one passage of Scripture that I always like, we, we hear it a lot at, um, at funerals and things, and um, it just, it, it really always, it just, this is another one of those that helped me. And as we're talking about the, harvest as we're talking about the bulk of the harvest so we've had the first fruits we've had the limited resurrection now we're not looking for signs we're listening for sounds and you know in first thessalonians paul was telling them listen be ready for christ's return be ready and you know and that's another part of this lesson that you could take with you is say that if, if folks was here lost uh um, this morning, maybe in Sunday school or in the church services, that, listen, this is a good lesson to understand that we're not waiting on anything. The first fruits have already happened. We're waiting on the bulk of the harvest to happen. We're not waiting on anything else but the harvest. So you better be ready. And Paul was trying to tell the church, and those around him are telling others and lost, be ready. You better be ready for Christ's return. And when you think about that and you study in 1 Thessalonians, and this is a, a familiar passage of Scripture that I always like that you hear at gravesides and stuff, but it's talking about the harvest. And he says here, he says, um, 
Remember, let's just pick up kind of in verse 12. We're just kind of picking up in places this morning. It says that you may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. Now notice this, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He's talking about the harvest. If, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which slept in Jesus will God bring with him. Here we go. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. See, we're waiting for sounds. We're not looking for signs. Um, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now here's what I've always liked about this passage of Scripture, and it's not trying to um, make light of any death or suffering that people go through and, and the sorrow of death. But as you study this, I can't help but as you read it, be encouraged that when Paul's telling us here, he's saying, listen, be ready for Christ's return. Yeah, have your walk in check. And he says, listen, I don't want to have you ignorant, brethren, about those which are asleep. Because here's the thing, they're going to rise first. Now, he does use almost, and for lack of a better term, a little humor there, because it's almost like we truly, and I think sometimes our finite minds can't fully understand it. But we're waiting on the harvest. And he said, listen, don't you, he, he, it's, it's kind of like he's trying to bring it in perspective. He says, we're focused on who's already dead. But he's saying, listen, I'm telling you, don't worry about them. Matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that just because you're standing here, you're not going to prevent them from coming up. So it's almost like he uses a little humor. He says, listen, don't worry. If you're standing in the graveyard that day, you're not going to prevent them from coming up because they're going to rise first. You follow along, it's so interesting when you see the verses and they come alive. He says, listen, they're coming out first. And then those that are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the air. He says, listen, don't worry about them. You're not even going to prevent them from coming up. They're coming out of there first. That's the bulk of the harvest. It's the rapture of the church is what he's talking about here, the bulk. The bulk of the harvest when it's coming in. And so the laws of the harvest apply. So then now this morning in closing we look at the gleanings. We look at the gleanings. We look at what's left. Um, again, there's many stories even in the Bible about the gleanings. The gleanings. Revelation chapter 11 verse 12. It says... Here, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Here, if you will, as we're talking about, um, you see the two witnesses and the 144,000 evangelists going forth. So here, the rapture. Um, as you study the Bible and you understand the outline of the Bible, the rapture's already taken place. And here's the gleanings. These two witnesses, the ones that have been evangelized and are saved, and they're coming up. The gleanings. It's over at that point. You've got the first fruits. That's already happened. We're waiting on the rapture of the church. That's the bulk of the harvest. Then there'll be a day, and, and we don't, you know, as you study in Revelation and stuff, when these evangelists go forth and they preach the word of God and people get saved, then one day you're going to see the gleanings, the laws of the harvest. So, and as you see, it says, 
in verse uh, 14 there, is, as I was reading, it says, And the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And you can see this separation, if you will, here. It says, And the same hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were uh, frighted, and gave glory to God in heaven. And you see this separation here of something that he's calling them up and saying, come home, come up hither. So what does this mean for you and I this morning? Is this just something that you can put together in the, in the scriptures and, um, and talk about and it makes for a, a fair um, Sunday school lesson? But the lesson for us, for everybody out here, and it, it makes us busy to work, just like Jesus said, look at the fields, they're, they're white, ready to harvest is for a non-believer would be don't miss the harvest. Don't miss the bulk. And that's the thing that sometimes you have to realize is we worry so much about what's going to happen today. And, and we preach that way and we teach that way. Well, if you went out here and you died in a car wreck today, are you ready to go meet the Lord? And, and that's a very true statement. And it's a wonderful statement. It's a very true statement. But we also have to understand that listen, we don't just have to live in today. What you need to understand this morning, if you're here lost, nothing has to take place for the rapture, for the harvest to take place. That's as important as if you die, go out here and die in a car wreck today. Because if the Lord comes back before the church service is over, the harvest has gone in. And, and if you don't learn anything from this this morning, is to learn that, listen, the first fruits is over. That's already happened. The rapture could happen at any moment. So again, that just expresses the urgency for folks to be saved. Um, and, it, and it should instill in us the urgency to pass the gospel message on to others as well. Because, yeah, you could go out of here and, and die from a heart attack or from a car accident or anything and, and go and meet the Lord. But you can also today if you're a non-believer or if you know someone lost, that listen, the rapture could happen today and the bulk of the harvest is coming in and then it's over as well. So there's ways to look at this thing and it's just interesting when we study the word of God and then you can apply those great truths sometimes. Like I said, even as you look in the uh, story of Ruth and Boaz and you see she out and picking up the gleanings. You remember he told them, said just, you know, uh, turn the corner a little uh, um, narrow there on the end and leave a little bit more. And it's just, it's just interesting when you study the Bible and you apply these principles that are found and it, and it helps you make sense of what already happened. And then even something as simple as this morning as talking about the laws of the harvest helps us understand difficult passages of Scripture just like when those graves were opened and they were laying there and they came up after his resurrection it helps you to understand those things it's just basic bible principles heavenly father we thank you so much for this day your many blessings lord we thank you for our sunday school time together we pray for pastor cody as he preaches here in just a little while lord and we pray especially again this morning for uh, brother jerry widener that you'll just uh, help him to uh, feel better and get out of the hospital lord and and pray that you'll just touch him there and we just pray, Father, that uh, as we go forward in these days ahead that we won't uh, be all doom and gloom, but we'll come in excited to, to hear something from your word, apply it to our hearts and lives, and to live for you. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't mind, I think they're still cleaning before uh, the services.